Hello and welcome to episode 127, there I go looking at it again, of the Mouse Makes Knitting podcast. My name is Mandy, sometimes known as Mouse, and Miss Poppy is still on sick leave. She's been back to the vets. Um, we were quite worried, she's not eating very much as I've mentioned before. She's starting to get a little bit wobbly on her back legs. So we popped back to the vet and he said, well, it's because she's only eating chicken. And she hadn't lost any more weight, which is brilliant, but we would like her to put some back on that she's already lost. So we now have some tablets to give her every day to stimulate her appetite, which are working very well, apart from the fact they've made her very, very angry with us. And she has now retreated back underneath the dining table. And if anybody goes anywhere near the table, let alone her, she growls at them. So, yeah. She might not um, be appearing for a little while. Not necessarily because she's ill, but because she's angry. Sorry about that. Sorry I, we've ruined it for everybody. I'll start with what I'm wearing. This is an old, old, old finish. Well, it's not that old. Two, maybe three years. This is the Botanic Shawl by Stephen West. And I knit it in one and a bit balls of um, Zorba Ball in the smoking area colourway. And then for my main colour, I used the, the Blackies West Yorkshire Spinners licorice. And in the way that we mad knitting people do, I bought this. No, I made, I made this and then I bought some t-shirts that would go with it. So I bought a pack of three. There's this one. Um, there's one that's a little bit darker teal than that. And then there's one that's kind of a burnt orange, I suppose, which doesn't go with this at all. But the other two do. Um, and I've got some black t-shirt dresses that it goes with and so on. I try, I don't always succeed, but I try to knit things that will go with other things in my wardrobe. I'm about to show you my finished object, which goes with pretty much nothing in my wardrobe. So that's a, a fail in that respect. This is my Morrison scarf. It's still a little bit damp. I'm not going to put it round my neck because of that. I finished it yesterday. I think it was yesterday. I've not been very well, um, which has, has meant a lot of sleeping. And when I'm sleeping, I'm not knitting. So I didn't get this finished as soon as I wanted. And I didn't get on with the other things as as far as I wanted, but never mind. I was going to measure it and, and work out how long it is and I forgot to do that. So this is it in its entirety. It's quite long. I'd say it's probably coming up on six feet long. When I showed it to you last week, I was there where that little dangle is dangling. And so I, I did the rest of that section, these two, and then put on another cuff. The cuff is West Yorkshire Spinner's Marshmallow, I think. Um, and most of the rest of it is my advent from Moonlight Fibre last year. I did cheat a little bit with the yellow slip stitches on this section and this section. They did not come from my advent. I ran out of the yellow that was in the advent, so I put in some scraps. I'm very pleased with it. I had intended to wear it today to show you, but as I say, it is a little bit damp and I don't really want to... Um, put a damp scarf around my neck for obvious reasons but also because about this time last week our central heating boiler packed up so 
we've got no central heating which is another reason it's still a bit damp I only sprayed it I didn't um, soak it but it still hasn't dried in time um, yes yeah, so we've got no central heating and no hot water but fortunately we are having a new boiler installed Monday next week and we have an electric shower so we can at least wash in hot water and obviously the, the washing machine heats up the water and washes the clothes all by itself and we have like all the fan heaters in Somerset now live in our house as do Peter's oil filled radiator and Peter's brother-in-law lent us two um, halogen heaters I think they are they, they're, they're very bright they're like the light of a thousand suns um, yeah I'm a little bit afraid of them that's all I'm going to say about those so anyway that's part of the reason I've not been very well we think my my core temperature dipped a little bit I struggled to um, maintain my own body temperature if I'm far too hot I'm far too hot and I can't cool down if I get cold I cannot warm up and I couldn't warm up and I couldn't stay awake and I was in bed with the duvet and the fan heaters and lots of blankets and it wasn't until Dave forced some hot soup down me that I began to feel a bit better so it's to do with my kidneys um, people with with kidney disease shouldn't get cold well, your body produces a stress hormone that has a bit of a detrimental effect on your kidneys and um, yeah I think my kidneys took a bit of hammering my temperature was a bit lower than it ought to be I've always been weird that way this has got nothing to do with knitting I've always been if I get a temperature if I'm ill and I get a temperature I get a low temperature rather than a high one so if I'm really really poorly my temperature will drop to like 35 degrees um, and it has been lower so I don't know I'm guessing that was what was wrong with me certainly I was passing a little bit of blood which is another sign that my kidneys were a bit unhappy but yeah all back to normal now and the heating will be fixed by this time next week and so yes all good so did I tell you it was the Morrison scarf I think it's by Jackie Verbeek I foolishly put the pattern away and I'm 99.99 recurring it is a free pattern so yeah I'm planning to make another one I'm planning to make a couple more actually I want to make one with a solid uh, back main colour and just one colour for the slip stitches so it's just a two colour short uh, scarf and I've decided what I'm going to do with the yarn that my friend Jan gave me is <clears throat> knit one probably using some pale grey as a contrast so do a pale grey cuff then the, the yarn that my friend Jan gave me is in 250 gram balls and it's beautiful brightly striped um, colours knit 150 gram ball when that finishes join in the rest of the grey having saved a bit for the cuff at the other end knit all through the grey knit the other 50 gram ball and then put the other cuff on and I think that's going to look really nice so future knitting plans no idea when I'm going to get round to that at the rate that I'm going not for about 50 years because I would like to finish considerably more of, of, of my leftover whips before I start adding to them again uh, what else have I got to show you not a lot really this is what I pulled out 
to take the place of the Morrison scarf. I'm not going to show you the picture on the pattern because we discovered last week that that was fairly pointless. This is the summer sorbet. Oh, I'm going to have to look because I'm doubting myself. I'm pretty sure it's a summer sorbet. Yeah, summer sorbet tea by Lee Ambernitz. And I'm knitting it in some of my own hand dyed yarn. Um, that was a, a reject, really, from last year's July year of the sock. I don't know how well this is coming out. My screen is very dark. But that might just be... Might not be the recording. It might be the way my screen is showing it. Um, I've done one row. Since I showed it to you last week, I have done one whole row. Can you see the progress marker there? Yes. It's very impressive. But what I did do is go round and pick up the neckline and put on some rib. The pattern, I thought the pattern said you could put rib on. It doesn't. It suggests an I-cord. If you've done an I-cord bind off for the, the hem and the sleeves. I I would prefer a rib, so I have done a rib. And there we go. I'm hoping I only did eight rows because I've only got 300 grams of this and I want to make it a reasonable length. So I want to make sure that I've got plenty and so I didn't want to go mad with the rib and then find that I'd not got enough to make it a length that I wanted. So I've done eight rows. I'm hoping that when I block it, it'll stop rolling in. I think it's being encouraged to roll in really because of the way I've knit it and also because it's on quite a, a short needle. So... I can now make some proper progress on this now that I've finished my scarf. Other than that, all I've been knitting really is Peter's socks. I'll give you a quick look at those. He came round yesterday. I showed him my oops -a daisy one up, one down, um, and he didn't mind at all. And he was, in fact, wearing a pair of his hand-knit socks from a couple of years ago, three years ago maybe. Yeah, so I've gone... I literally just put those markers in and I've got that much of each foot done now. Um, I think they look all right. They're, they're never going to match because they are one up, one down. If you didn't see last week, allow me to demonstrate. Oh, oh now I've made a tangle. That's the pattern repeat. Oops. It's because I'm knitting one from the inside and one from the outside of the ball. Oh. Look at what I've done now, look. I'm just going to put that away. <laughs> That's a problem for later, I've decided. I'll put that away. And I've done a little bit. I'm going to show you this because you haven't seen it for a few weeks. I've done a little bit more of the brioche on my star blanket. There's no pattern for those socks, by the way. They're just my own vanilla sock recipe. Um, where's that thing? Oh yeah. Last time you saw it, I'd literally just started the brioche. I was down there and now I have, let me see if I can straighten out a section. Now I have this much. I think I've got either six or nine more rows I think which is only half as many rows but you knit them twice so I'm counting each go at a row as a row so although I've done one row I've knit it twice so I'm calling that two rows is that making sense and yet again every time I do brioche I do this that's the right side. I like the wrong side better. But I think it might be a bit like ribbing. You know, sometimes if you do a one-by-one one rib, 
the wrong side looks neater than the right side unless you're doing the twisted stitch. I think it might just be that. It's got nothing to do with the colour. So I'm closer to finishing this than I was when you saw it. And I'll be honest, I've had to drop down a couple of times and fix some kind of where I've let the um, the yarn over I've missed it and it it's not got into the stitch but I've really enjoyed doing the brioche I'm finding it very soothing very meditative um, <clears throat> which is just as well since I'm hoping if I get enough things finished to knit an entire brioche shawl later in the year um, I was just thinking I could do that for my Christmas shawl in November because I've got the yarn the main skein from my advent from my yarny corner and I've got the main skein from my mouse witch yarn advent Sunday number four which is an undyed with a gold stellina in They'd look really nice in brioche. Hmm. That might be, that might be my Christmas shawl to knit in November this year. So, it's getting there, slowly but surely. But it has been rather nice. I might be getting, I might be getting brave enough to try the foxtail wrap. Is it flying foxtail wrap or is it just foxtail wrap? I can't remember. I might be getting brave enough to have another go at that, but maybe not just yet. That's everything I've been knitting and it's, we're only 15 minutes in. I did win a prize. I won a prize and I've left it behind the camera. I'm now going to get really, really close to you. I'm very sorry. You might want to close your eyes if you are of a nervous disposition. Hang on. I might also knock you on the floor. I'm going to try not to, though. OK, I got it. I watch, and I, I hope you do too, Hannah of Hannah's Happy Space. I've got one of her um, bags that's got some socks in it from last year. I will get round to it eventually. When it comes out the pot, you know, the pot... I'm just wondering if that's the shelf of shame should this be the pot of shame perhaps it should when they come out there you'll see the bag from Hannah um I won a prize on Hannah's podcast it is Hannah's happy space it will be linked below if you're not watching it I really think you should especially if like me you are rather fond of a rainbow so it came with this card which I'm claiming is my mantra and it's it's from different people so there's this gorgeous little bag rainbows made by Hannah she makes these bags this I think is the small size the one I've got is medium and there's also a large um, this might this might become a dedicated muscle for a bag. It's just the right size. So, bag made by Hannah. Inside it is some yarn donated by Ruth from Ruth Loves to Knit, who I'm sure you all watch. And I'm going to say the thing. It contains all my favourite colours, but it does contain most of my most favourite, favourite colours. So it's got a limey green, a beautiful bright pink, there's kind of a gold as well in there, I don't know if the camera's picking it up, there's purple, there's pale pink, there's even, try and isolate it, sort of a, a turquoise. I have some ideas for this. I should tell you what it is. It's by Felt Fusions. Um, 
I'm sorry I'm itching a lot. I think it might be this scarf, unfortunately. Um, the colourway is called Heart on Your Sleeve-ish. Oh, now Dave is ringing me. I'm going to have to bounce him. I forgot again. I forgot again to tell him I was recording. I'm a bad wife. Yes. Yarn donated by Ruth. And I'll take these out of the bag so there's a bit of crinkle, sorry. Some stitch markers. I don't actually know. What is it they say on antiques programmes? The provenance of the stitch markers. But we have a little waffle. I think that's with bacon and maple syrup. Turn around, waffle. Turn around. Let me try it. Hang on. It has got somebody's fingerprint on the back. But I have no resources to track the maker down. Then there is a, a teeny tiny waffle. It's got some butter and I think maybe a strawberry in the shape of a heart. A donut. Now I want a nice donut with sprinkles on it. A duck. A little rubber ducky. And then two Starbucks mugs. This one I think is probably hot chocolate. And this one could also be hot chocolate. So there's sort of a mug and then one of their mugger, meg, mugger, mega bucket type cups. So lovely prize. Very excited to receive it. Thank you very much, Hannah and Ruth. And thank you, Sebby, for pulling me out of the pot. My name out of the pot. Right. This is where... The knitting content ends and the shop content begins. So if you're not interested in that, there's no need to watch it. <laughs> Thank you for joining me. Sorry about Miss Poppy not being here again. And I will see you next week. If you are sticking around, I must tell you also, I must stop scratching my neck, that member Zoom should be Thursday the 29th. I was going to say of October. February, we're in February. Thursday the 29th of February. However, Wednesday the 28th is Dave's birthday and on Thursday the 29th Peter and Aaron are cooking us a birthday meal for Dave. Can't be done on the Wednesday for reasons. So the member Zoom has been moved to the following Thursday which is the 7th of March. If you're in the Instagram group I've already told you if you're not I hope you see this and don't wonder where we all are okay shop update there are three new yarns go that's two three new yarns going into the shop I, my brain may not be quite back to normal um first of all the birthstone collection for March the birthstone, according to my chart, is aquamarine. And so, I have these two. Now, it's a bit different this month. It may be a bit different a couple of months because of what the stone is. So this is the variegated. Now, I don't know that it's going to come out on the camera. But this is a blend of three different colours and I don't think the camera is going to pick it up. I think it looks the same colour, just lighter and darker. I'm not sure you're picking up the different tones. Um, and then there is a tiny, tiny amount of speckling just because I felt it looked a bit flat. So I popped a very, very small amount of speckles in. And this is the tonal, the aqua, aqua, aqua marine tonal. This is very badly wound. I apologise. I wound many skeins yesterday and my wrists are very angry with me. And these were the last ones I wound 
and so they're looking a little bit sorry for themselves. I know, I'll open it up and then maybe it will look like a bit better. No, not really. So where the variegated is three different colours, which may or may not have worked, this is just different depths of one colour, which is why I'm calling this the tonal. Then there is another one that I couldn't resist doing because it just goes with the other two so well. And this is Kingfisher. It's coming out a bit more blue on my screen than it is. So I thought that the three of them went really, really nicely together. If you were looking to do a shawl or a tee, let go with a fade. My fingers would not let go. I thought that was rather nice. And there may be one in my future. Just putting it out there. Because these are, can you guess, some of my favourite colours. So that's the birthstone collection and an extra one. And then there is the mini club, the mystery mini club for March. And this is the inspiration photo. Hoping that was all on the screen, I couldn't see. There is, at the time of recording, one February mini club left in the shop. Um, and I, I, I'm not adding more in because by the time this goes out, there'll only be one day of February left. So, and they are meant to be just in the month that they're they're released, so that makes them a bit more exclusive. And I think that really is everything. It is a short one. I'm sorry, but I need to put the fan heater back on and you won't be able to hear me then. I don't think the cold's doing my hair much good. So I'm going to go away and leave you alone and I will see you again next week where I'll be all warm and toasty and probably complaining that I'm too hot. So prepare yourselves for that. <laughs> well, just let me just check. I was just all ready to say goodbye then. Let me just check. Told you about the Zoom. Oh, the shop update will be on Sunday the 3rd of March. That's it. That is everything. Okay. Oh, no, that's not everything. How could I forget the biggest thing? Oh, my God. Included in the advert. In, in the shop update will be the advents. That was fairly vital information. And because I didn't write it down, I didn't remember to tell you. Yes, shop update will include the advents. There will be the mini skeins. There will also be, I wasn't going to do this, but then I thought I would. Um, there will also be sock sets. There are a limited number um, there is a choice between fingering weight and DK. Um, same as last year, you can buy the whole thing in one go or one week at a time. And the inspiration, I should put a picture in here, shouldn't I? Because I haven't got one to show you. The inspiration this year is courtesy of Karen from the Recreational Knitting Podcast. I ran a competition in my um, members group in January for ideas for this year's advent. I had an idea, but I wanted to see if anybody else had a different one. And I had lots of really, really good suggestions. And I researched them all, but the one that um, captured my interest most for this year is this one. So it's being called Adventure around the United Kingdom. Um, so week one will be England, week two Northern Ireland, week three Scotland, week four Wales. And that's the same whether it's the minis or the sock sets. They will all be 
inspired by landmarks from that week's country. So they are also going on sale on, on Sunday. And that really is everything I'm supposed to tell you. Well done, brain. At least I remembered before and actually pressed stop recording. So now I am definitely going to go away and leave you alone till next week. And until I see you, happy knitting. Bye, guys. <laughs>